number. It's the number three train. Look, what number? Abby, come here. Signature, you hear that whistle, please. Thank you. 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 Thank For the safety of our younger riders, we ask that the adults with them place themselves on the outside of the row. If it's not practical, make sure that they're held are easily within your reach. Also, we ask that you do not stand up and move around whatsoever while the train is in motion, keeping your head, hands, and feet inside the cars at all times. Eating and drinking is not permitted, but water from an enclosed water bottle is just fine. We are heading over to the Susquehanna Station, and then we'll be coming right back here to the Firestone Station. The total trip time is about 30 minutes. We will not be stopping at Smith's Creek, for those of you who are familiar with that station. It's currently under construction. So, uh, with that in mind, everyone sit back and enjoy your train ride. Thank you. Here we go. And as we leave the station, let's wave goodbye to our station masters, Pat and Chris, and also to our uh, relief conductor there, Bill, who's uh, taking his place, and to our manager over there, Lynette. Wave goodbye to everybody. As we go into the Greenfield Village, there are seven different districts for which you can visit. The very first one is the Henry Ford Model T. And if you look over to your left, you'll see a white farmhouse. It was built in 1861. And on July 30th, 1863, Henry Ford was born on the second floor bedroom of that farmhouse. Yes, that's his birthplace. We have presenters there that will tell you more about his early life. He left the farmhouse at the age of 16 because farming, farming was not for him. After visiting there, walk over to the Ford Motor Company and listen to the story about the he came up with the vision of a motor car, the Model T, back in 1908. It changed the world of transportation forever. Afterwards, maybe take a ride on the Model T. The Model T loading dock is right behind it. Our next district takes us into Main Street. Here we'll see the home of the Wright Brothers and the Wright Brothers Cycle Shop. It is there that they came up with the flyer in 1903 that set the world of aviation into a tailspin. Next, visit Mrs. Cohen's millinery shop. We have staff available that are making hats and other accessories like they did back in 1880. We also have the Heinz House. The Herschel Spillman Carousel is just down the street, built in 1913. I hope you have taken a ride or will be taking a ride on that carousel. It has a menagerie of animals to choose quite a few from most of the carousels. And you see the statue of Thomas Edison takes us into another district, Edison at Works. Way over to the far left, the brick building, is the machine shop. And the gray structure, the two-story structure, is what we call the invention laboratory up on the second floor. Is where Edison and his crew came up with wonderful ideas and inventions. The electric light bulb, the phonograph, 
the telegraph improvements on the telephone as well. And the young single men that worked for him would rent a room over at Sarah Jordan's boarding house. It's the yellow house that you see in the distance there. It made history because in 1879, it was the very first home fitted for an electric uh, wire. If you go into the house, you'll see the wire sit on the outside of the walls. Next to that is Edison's Fort Myers Laboratory. Even when he wintered in Florida, give this district. Here we have the homes of Robert Foss, Noah Webster, the Hermitage Slave Quarters. We also have Susquehanna Plantation and the far corner, Daggett Family Farm. We have so many things going on here today. I hope you get a chance to stop in and visit. We have presenters in the buildings. You'll learn so much about how people lived in different eras. Over 300 years of history, right here in this district. We are now coming to the Susquehanna station. Remain seated. The engineer will set a break and give us the sound of a single whistle, letting us know it's safe to come off the train. You'll exit off to your left side at the station. Say hello to Alana, our station master, as we pull in. Wait for the whistle. Stay seated. Ooh. It's safe now to come off the reach. Also, we ask that you do not stand up and move around whatsoever while the train is in motion, keeping your head, hands, and feet inside the cars at all times. Eating and drinking is not permitted, but water from an enclosed water bottle is just fine. We are heading over to the Firestone Station. For those of you that are familiar with the Smith Creek Station, it is under construction. We will not be stopping there. So sit back, everybody. Enjoy your train ride as we move on to Firestone Station. Thank you. Let's wait goodbye to Alana. She helped everybody get on board safely. Thank you, Alana. Over to the left is a white structure. It's the Susquehanna Plantation. It was built in 1840 from Tidewater, Maryland. That plantation back in the day was 700 acres big. And the cash crop of that was uh, tobacco. The slaves were the ones that worked the plantation. Over at the house, we have a presenter that talks about the hardships they endured. The little orange building you see there is the Clifton family home. It was built in the mid-1650s. It happens to be the oldest American home we have here. And it's a single room dwelling. And Mr. and Mrs. Clifton raised seven children in that house. Imagine that. Go in and take a peek and see how they managed. The Ferris Windmill built in the 1650s happens to be the oldest windmill in the country from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And then we have the Daggett Family Farmhouse built in 1754. We have presenters there. As we, you can see, the presenter is talking about the raised garden beds there. Definitely getting some gardening tips is worth the while stopping in. Over to your left, you'll see pasture that we have for our draft butcher on horses. These are the ones that have been doing a lot of work here during the day and also in the evening. This is a place for them to get some rest and relaxation. Oh yeah, there's some turkeys. The turkeys do love to hang around with their, the horses. There's another one there in the pasture. In 1970, the staff over at the Henry Ford Museum got an idea that we needed a three-mile perimeter railway around the Greenfield Village. The plans were put in motion, and by August 22, 1972, 
the inaugural trade ride took place. That was almost 50 years ago, and guess what? The locomotive that was pulling that passenger train that day was none other than the Torch Lake. The same locomotive that's pulling your train right now. Can you imagine what it felt like to be on that initial train ride? And here you are, 50 years later, doing the same thing with the same locomotive pulling the cars. Amazing, isn't it? The Torch Lake happens to be built in 1873, making it a very old historic train. And it's the oldest locomotive that runs on a regular schedule in the entire country. So you've definitely got a gem that's pulling our train today. Another thing about the Torch Lake, it happens to be a tank engine, meaning that the coal and the water are stored right on the locomotive. It does not pull a tender car like some other steam locomotives do. For those of you familiar with Thomas the Tank Engine, it's just like that. And speaking of Thomas the Tank Engine, he is returning after being absent for two years. He's coming on May, the weekends of May 13th to the 15th and May 20th to the 22nd. Tickets still are available, but they're really fast. Sit back and enjoy some of the sounds that a steam locomotive makes as we move through this wildlife preserve. And keep your eyes open. You just might see something popping out their heads, especially since the brush is so thin right now. the boiler. Doing so is just regular maintenance for that boiler. At the end of 30 days, this locomotive is going to go into the roundhouse where all the water will be drained from the boiler and then they will do a scrubbing of the walls of that boiler. And then it'll be ready for another 30 day run here in the village. Coming into Walnut Grove area, a place where we have many of our historic events take place. Coming in June, we have historic baseball returning for those baseball fans. They play baseball by the old rule book. They don't use gloves. The players catch with their bare hands, catch the ball with their bare hands. We have teams, the Lottie Das and the cheer the baseball teams on. Also coming in June, uh, July, we have our Independence Day celebration. The 4th of July weekend, we will have the Detroit Symphony Orchestra returning here. And then in June, well, Father's Day weekend, we have Motor Buster, where we have cars from 1933 all the way up to 1978, the muscle cars. And then coming September, we have Old car festival with cars from 1932, all the way as old as 1890. Up in front of us is the Henry Ford Academy High School. There are over 500 students in attendance this year. 10th through 12th graders come to this campus. The 9th graders are housed at the museum. It was Henry Ford who said, learning to do is by doing. The students are able to take what they learn here in the classroom and go into the village and museum and see firsthand what it is that they studied. Not something other classrooms can do. 
in these vintage COVID cars up ahead, those are always reserved for our privileged seniors who will be leaving us in a couple of months. To be a student here at the Henry Ford Academy High School, one must live in Wayne County, Michigan. After submitting an application, it's the luck of the draw that your application's pulled so that you can attend high school here for four years, tuition free. even come from that time period. And you'll sit at a table with candlelight. We are now coming into the region of the Smith's Creek Station. We will not be stopping, but you get a sneak peek at the construction and how nice it's coming along. It's transforming into a beautiful station, a little longer than the other one. When the landscaping is completed, it'll look beautiful. In front of us, we are now in Railroad Junction. In front of us is the Smith Street Railroad Depot. And, and we both had that block here in 1929 because it had a young Thomas Edison connection. In fact, he brought Thomas Edison to the station 50 years later. And, and uh, Thomas Edison recognized it. Stations like this were popping up all over the country with the advent of the railroad. Across the street is the Edison Illuminating Company. Young Henry Ford had one of his first jobs there as a steam engineer. And there it is. There is our new gem. It's the Detroit Central Market. It was built in 1860 and it comes to us from Detroit. We have presenters there, curators, who will tell you about the history of the past of this building and also about its future. Oh, it looks like we will be stopping for some, let's see, water or coal? Let me see. Neither. It's too far. Just look straight ahead, you'll be able to see. What are they doing? It's neither. We're just letting off some of our staff off the locomotive. <laughs> oh darn, I thought we'd get a nice view of the either one water or coal. In front of us is the Detroit Toledo Milwaukee Roundhouse that was built in the year 2000. But it's made to look like... Oh, 
expected? It was made to look like one from Marshall, Michigan in 1884. These started to crop up all the way. Wave pipes are our workers. Yeah. 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 This is where our uh, locomotives and our other rolling stock are maintained by a highly experienced crew. Now we come into Liberty Craft Works and it's here where you can see the beginning of American, Americana manufacturing industry. We have a weaving shop, a pottery shop, a glass blowing shop, and a printing shop. All of those have artisans that work that are using the same skills like they would have back in the 1880s. We also have the Gunsoli Cutting Shop and the Larranger Grist Mill here. And if there's anything that you should see that you like what the workers were making over the Liberty Crafts, you can purchase some of those things that they've been making. One of our drivers.